Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Wealthologist Weekly. I am Chris Hobart, also known as the Wealthologist. And today, well, we're going to jump on a topic that's been on everybody's mind lately. In fact, Jacob and I just talked about it in our Wealthologist Live this past month, and there is a link in our newsletter, so be sure to take a look at that. But we're going to talk today a little bit about the impact of elections on the stock market and dive a little bit deeper. Now, if you think about it, if we think about the past couple of weeks, just everything that's been going on with the election... If there's any indication in there, we could be facing one of the most contentious presidential elections in our nation's history. And, you know, we've already heard from some clients that have said, man, if my guy loses or my gal loses, I'm moving to Canada. Here's the thing. That's your choice. But I want to take a look at maybe some of the data that might help us maybe make some different considerations. I, I want to go back in time. Let's go back to 1928. Since 1928, the stock market has actually performed pretty well during presidential election years. Out of 24 elections that have occurred since then, the S&P 500 ended up 83% of the time. Now, when a Democrat was elected or reelected, the average total return for the year was 15%. When a Republican was elected, the average was 12.9. Either way, pretty good. Now, it's crucial to look beyond election years uh, because investing only when Republican was in office, well, that grew your $10,000 investment in 1961 to over $102,000 by 2023. Now, investing only when a Democrat was in office grew that same investment to more than $500,000. But staying invested no matter who was in office led to a whopping $5.1 million. In other words, better to remain invested than to hop in and out based upon who's in office. Now, the data also shows that the stock market tends to gain regardless of which party is in the White House. Every president experiences market drawdowns during their term. But overall, the market recovers and continues to grow. We are the United States after all. This indicates that election years aren't significantly different from non-election years. Now, let's talk about volatility around elections. A lot of questions around this from our clients. And the reality is it's normal and it's to be expected. Uh, the market can spike just as easily as it can crash. So trying to time these types of market cycles by selling before November and buying back in in the new year, it's just not a foolproof strategy. In fact, missing out on quick gains could be detrimental to your plan, especially since the market tends to stabilize after the election. Now, what if we're talking about Congress? The stock market has performed well, again, under both parties' controls. However, it often shines brightest during periods of gridlock. In other words, when they're not getting along because they're not pushing stuff forward. Divided governments make it harder to pass radical policies, which leads to less uncertainty and more stability for investors. For example, when President Obama faced a divided Congress, the S&P 500 returned over 105% in six years. A similar situation occurred with President Trump, where the S&P continued to rise despite a divided Congress. Here's the bottom line. While politicians set the rules, consumers and businesses, you and me, we drive economic growth. The stock market has historically been super resilient, regardless of who has political power. However, this election, it's unique because we now have various levels of election protection for investors, uh, unlike what we've had historically. Now, one such solution is an insurance product with several attractive features. Uh, for example, uh, there's no lockup, so there's no surrender fees, there's no commissions paid, there's no downside risk, so there's guaranteed zero loss of principal, uh, and that's guaranteed by a major insurance carrier with your annual gains protected or locked in. Uh, also, what we call high participation rates. Uh, currently, 12.25% of the S&P 500 for investments over $250,000 and 12% for those below. In addition, uh, you've got what's called an annual reset. Uh, that means if the S&P is up 15% in year one, down 20% in year two, and up 10% in year three, this solution would yield about 22.25% over that same period of time. Now, this type of election protection helps to neutralize the risk of emotional selling and really take out those peaks and valleys. Now, if the market tanks after the election, well, good news is your principal is protected. And if it rallies, the investor benefits from the gains. 
So there's really no need to time the market in a scenario like this. Now, there are investors concerned about being capped on the upside, which is why we offer another solution that does what's called buffering. And that buffers 10 to 20% of the initial loss over two to four years while offering over 100% of the market's upside. No lockups, no commissions. See, these election protection solutions are relatively new. Now, thanks to higher interest rates and advanced technology, uh, it, it helps you have different options available to you if you have nerves around the election or, quite frankly, anything when it comes to investing. So if you're worried about the upcoming election, talk to our team. Uh, high interest rates are a great opportunity for utilizing different types of election protection that are relatively new on the market. But this could change if the Fed starts to cut rates in the fall. So opportunity is kind of knocking right now. I got to tell you, you got to remember the key to successful investing is to stay informed and make decisions based upon data and not emotions. As always, I want to thank you for joining me on the Wealthologist Weekly. Stay tuned for more insights on financial planning and wealth management and see you next time. Have a great rest of your week.